Hi there, uh, welcome to one more uh, webinar from Telerik India. We normally do these webinars uh, pretty much every month, every Thursday, close to three, to, uh, like you know, two to three webinars is what we have been doing uh, over the last two years. Uh, this is part of our initiative just to spread the knowledge, spread the information, what's new, what's latest, what's greatest. Sometimes we talk about Telerik things, sometimes we talk about generic things. Today we're going to be talking about something called as Telerik mobile platform. So we're going to take a look at what exactly is this, how do you use it, uh, what are the things available as part of the Telerik mobile platform. So that's the idea behind today's webinar, just to introduce you to a new thing that's been going on in Telerik. Uh, we have been uh, having this mobile platform for close to a year now, uh, so we are happy to uh, make you uh, like you know let you guys know what this is exactly, how does it solve things. So that's the intent or goal of this particular webinar. And let me move the slide. So. Uh, my name is Lohit Gn. Uh, I work as a developer evangelist for Telerik, and that's my photo. That's how I look. I'm also a Microsoft MVP in the area of ASP.NET IIS. I wrote a book last year. Um, it's on Windows Phone. Um, you know, using F Sharp, the language F Sharp, and then creating Windows Phone applications. So that was my first book last year. Uh, as I said, a couple of uh, uh, you know links for you to bookmark Telerik.com. That's a global corporate site. Kashipas.com is my personal website where I mostly write on ASP.NET and TelerikHelper.net is a uh, site where myself and my colleagues uh, colleague uh, keep writing uh, about Telerik and uh, generic things on the technology itself. You, I can be reached at uh, lohit.nagaraj at Telerik.com and my Twitter handle is Kashipas so if you are on Twitter you can tweet to me. I normally keep checking Twitter and then uh, you know, I'll respond back. So just before I start, uh, I would like to just, uh, you know, bring up this uh, information here, like, you know, Gartner is one of the uh, very well, uh, you know, kind of very well known research and then analyst firm. So uh, everybody keeps looking for uh, Gartner's uh, uh, research papers. So Gartner went and then published, uh, usually they publish a magic quadrant. What you're seeing is a magic quadrant here. So the four quadrants are challengers, leaders, visionaries, and niche players. So for two 2014 or in the uh, for in September 2014 Gartner published this magic quadrant for mobile application development platform and then Telerik has been um, featured in the visionaries uh, quadrant meaning uh, we're doing something uh, you know which is uh, good and then which is going to take us a long uh, tail so uh, Gartner sees that as a pretty good uh, thing about uh, mobile app development that we are doing and then we are, they have featured us in the visionaries and as you can see there are other players also in the leaders, in the challengers, in the uh, niche players, uh, we are there in the visionaries so I just wanted to bring this up so if you have more, if you want to know more about this you know you can go to Gartner's site and then look for uh, mobile application development platform, magic quadrant on that and then you'll be able to see that. Just a brief intro about Telerik, uh, maybe a quick intro. Telerik is a company founded in 2002 by four uh, friends. Uh, we are close to 800 plus to 900 plus. This is the old uh, slide deck and then uh, the number is still not updated. So we are close to 800 plus employees uh, all around the world. We have 11 offices in seven countries. We have a developer base of 1.4 million, meaning 1.4 million developers use one or the other Telerik tools or Telerik controls. These are some of the customers who are building amazing experiences using our tools. Uh, our, our customers are in 90 plus countries. Out of uh, f Fortune 500 companies, uh, we are close to 465 companies are using our tools and then uh, you know, 130 plus, uh, 130K companies uh, are using our tools. So this is how our uh, you know, user base is all about. Uh, our portfolio is uh, very simple. So as I said, we have something called as Dev Cloud, or that's what we are talking today. Uh, we call it as a mobile platform, Telerik mobile platform. The marketing name is the Dev Cloud. That's what the uh, the product name is. And we have Dev Tools or Developer Tools. Uh, we are known for our developer tools, uh, be it in uh, .NET, uh, that is ASP.NET, Ajax, or web, uh, the uh, MVC, or Windows Forms, or WPF. So you name a technology in .NET, we have a control set, out of the box control set. Uh, we also have mobile controls, uh, all those things. The CMS is uh, known as Sitefinity. That's the product. Um, the content management system from Telerik is known as Sitefinity. It's a ASP.NET uh, based content management system. 
and coming to the ALM we have a agile project management tool and uh, test studio which is a testing uh, product so these are the four main things that we sell or we offer our services uh, what we're going to be looking at uh, looking today is at our mobile tech stack or you know technology stack for mobile um, or we call it as app stack or application stack so this is a kind of a we call it as um, okay it's not come up on your screen so now it should be there yes so this is the blueprint as we call it internally or uh, we typically when we are talking to our customers we we show this to them and say hey this is if you want to go mobile uh, if you want to mobilize yourself if you want to mobilize your enterprise if you want to mobilize your customer this is a blueprint that you should be looking at so what's the blueprint so on, at the very high layer layer you have the UI right you know the uh, you will need to support uh, different form factors so uh, this is a misconception or this is kind of a confusion that everybody has as soon as we say mobility everybody thinks oh phone I need a phone application no mobility is a very generic term which means that how do I enable my customers or how do I enable my employees or how do I how do I enable myself to access certain information when I am on the move huh? when I am on the go so that's mobility so mobility is not just mobile application uh, you are on the road somebody calls up and says hey I need you to approve immediately so if you have an internet connection and if you had a application on your let's say an iPad or let's say a phone or whatever it is uh, you will be able to log on and then just say approve so that's mobility so you know people uh, normally don't get this fact everybody thinks when we say mobility oh mobile app no it's not it's all about making somebody uh, you know access a particular piece of information or particular piece of data when they're on the go uh, or maybe on a phone or maybe on a tablet or maybe on an iPad or you know whatever it is so that's mobility so when we talk about the UI there are different UIs that you have to take care right you know uh, there is a phone which is a 4 inch or 5 inch uh, there is a tablet which is maybe a, a 10 inch tablet of course you would have to take care of the traditional uh, desktop browser so this is what your UI layer is all about uh, you know basically uh, no uh, the question is on the go how is it possible to access via desktop so I'm not talking about on the go you access a desktop I never said that what I'm trying to say is mobility is all about taking care of all these things mobility mainly focuses on your uh, for, uh, smaller form factors but uh, somebody sitting inside the office uh, they would have to do some data entry or things so you will need to make sure that you provide or you build your architecture you build your application in such a way that you have you are covering all the three UIs you know for me the only three UI form factors one is a phone form factor another one is a tablet form factor another one is a desktop browser uh, I consider that also as a form factor so my UI should be able to uh, my UI should be there and all these three form factors that's the first thing second so that's why we say like you know in in uh, Telerik you take any con any UI you can build that with Telerik control so we have controls for the web for the hybrid for the native for the desktop so you you put it typically you take anything that you want to build we can give you a control for example for the web we have JSP based controls we have HTML5 based control we have dotnet based control we have PHP based control so maybe you want to mobilize in such a way that I want to create a mobile web application you know I don't want to do a mobile application rather mobile web application yes you're covered through the web controls that we have we have a very good uh, you know web controls which can work on any HTML5 browser or you may come back and say no I want to create a native application yes we have a control set for Android we have a control set for iOS we have a control set for Windows Phone so those are the native control sets maybe you will say like you know what I want to create a hybrid meaning I want to write once and uh, put it on all the marketplaces that I can know like for example Google Play Store uh, or the App Store or the Windows Marketplace so we are you are covered for that also we have control sets for hybrid we call it as UI for phone gap or uh, you know we have Kendo UI mobile so uh, Kendo UI is the product uh, Kendo UI mobile is the control set using which you can create hybrid mobile apps Kendo UI mobile controls are uh, adaptive rendering cross-platform control sets they take or they adapt themselves to the platform they run and then they give you a native look and feel so that is fine so we finished the UI layer but what about the other things that you need as part of a mobile application I need a storage for my mobile application I need to store data 
we give you something called as uh, a connect or uh, it's known as backend as a service that is database on the cloud so we have so the whole uh, mobile platform that we have is on our cloud uh, you know it's a public cloud and then you can uh, create a private if you want a private cloud we can give you a private cloud or if you want it to be installed in premise that is in your organization yes you can take all these offerings that I'm showing on the screen uh, and then deploy it on your um, enterprise so that you can do so what are the services that we give you connect which is nothing but backend as a service you can come in create a table create a column and then click on save the rest APIs are readily available you can consume those rest API from any platform that you want for example Android iOS .NET or simple JavaScript we give you client SDKs for that and then you see something called as build so you need to build a mobile application right so uh, we have for hybrid mobile application we have something called as app builder that is application builder so it's a IDE for hybrid mobile application you can do the coding you can do the debug you can do the simulation you can do the uh, building that is uh, build an APK file or an IPA file or a zap file right within that particular IDE I'm going to show all this demo uh, in a little while from now and then we also have a concept of analytics so you can use uh, our analytics service as part of the mobile platform what you can do is you can uh, analyze how your application is doing in the uh, platform in the you know in the field meaning you are put into the store how is this being downloaded how is this being uh, used uh, from where is my app being downloaded from which version of the phone uh, platform is my application being downloaded so all those metrics you can uh, kind of uh, uh, start tracking using our analytics uh, it's again a service you can use and then we also have deployment uh, testing so basically uh, mobile testing framework using our mobile testing framework you will be able to test mobile web apps uh, native uh, mobile apps uh, hybrid uh, mobile apps so that's the testing uh, again that's available as a service you can just take only the testing piece of it and we also provide you something called as app manager or application manager using which uh, we provide you a custom uh, private store for your organization wherein the development team can just come in and then publish an app uh, a testing team can log on to a portal and then download it and then you know directly put it onto your uh, onto their devices to test it so it's like a private store for your teams for your organization uh, you know instead of uh, going somewhere you can always publish it the dev team goes to the portal publishes it the uh, testing team will have a companion app for the app manager uh, you know all those things and then uh, it, it's basically uh, you can do the thing so these are some of the services that we give you as part of the mobile uh, platform uh, all in all the UI the control set then the building the connecting the testing the deployment the managing measuring design everything put together is a uh, telerik mobile platform so I am um, I'm not sure there's a question come to topic so I am talking about telerik mobile platform I'm not sure what ex exactly you're looking for so but I'm trying to address you know what is uh, Telerik mobile platform is all about so put together this whole thing is Telerik mobile platform as I said as of now we have a public cloud but if you want a private cloud we can make a private cloud if you want to uh, know the whole service that what I'm talking about everything needs to be in premise we can come and deploy um, you know the whole uh, Telerik mobile platform on your premises so that's typically what a mobile platform is all about from our side and this is a higher level uh, next slide let the next slide come back to you guys it's taking it yeah so there you go so you should see a, a key components slide deck now so uh, as I said you can have UI in web or hybrid or native so we have control sets for that and these are some of the uh, application development tools and the platform services that you can use for application building uh, we have prototyping the UI library is uh, Kendo UI mobile library and then uh, the IDE is app builder uh, you can do and functional debugging and live sync using our app testing uh, for the productivity we always have the source control and cloud build services uh, so you don't have to do anything use the IDE click on a button build and uh, it does a APA or the APK or the IPA uh, things from a plan other things that we have is you know mobile backend that's the backend as a service that I was talking about and then the analytics and feedback so you can actually track the usage track the features and then you uh, feedback uh, component is available out of the box so you can just con uh, readily use that in your application to get a feedback so this put together at a high level is what uh, the whole Telerik mobile platform is all about you can pick and choose 
uh, each piece here or you can go from A to Z meaning from the UI to the services I want to use everything yes you can uh, otherwise no I want only the UI controls yes you can buy the UI controls no I want only the backend as a service yes you can subscribe to only backend as a service so uh, put together this is what Telric platforms key components are next what I'm going to be doing is you know doing a complete demo of uh, diving into uh, the code in all those things so uh, let's get started if there's any questions now I can just take a look at it and then answer it or uh, you know just log it I'll uh, now start doing the demos so uh, everything starts now from uh, going to your browser and then navigating to platform.telerik.com So uh, as of now, you will see like, you know, uh, it is showing a lot of boxes. That is because uh, my um, credential is cached and then it knows who I am uh, in the browser. But if it were you, if you now go to platform.telric.com, what you will see is a sign up, uh, it's a uh, login page. If you don't have a credential, you would have to sign up. Uh, sign up will just ask your user ID and then uh, sorry email ID and then the, you provide your password and then you have access to platform so we give you 30 days free trial when you sign up uh, after that it's going to be locked down for you so now what you what I'm doing is you know uh, first thing it you see is it says a create a workspace button so let me get my zoomer or zoom it as we call it so that I can zoom and then show some of the things I think those of you who are waiting for demo, I'm pretty sure you are paying attention because we are doing demo now. So if you see here, uh, once you come in, so there is a create workspace. So from our perspective, workspace is nothing but a simple segregation. Uh, you may have a lot of projects going on. So each project can have different uh, pillars of our mobile platform. So we just segregate it by a workspace. So I'm going to call it as webinars, demo, workspace or let's call it webinars demo uh, doesn't matter oh, sorry so I come in I say create a workspace it's going to create a workspace now and what you will see is uh, seven boxes here so basically this seven box is nothing but what the pillar of uh, uh, you know Telerik mobile platform is all about you can build an hybrid mobile application right here or a native mobile application using JavaScript right here this is the backend as a service that I talked about uh, this is the analytics project that I talked about this is the mobile testing project app feedback app prototyper so these are the some of the things that are available in the interest of the time and uh, keeping in mind the uh, you know, uh, you're, you're spending some time with us, so I want to be cognizant of that, and then I'll try to speed up a couple of things here. Uh, what I will do is I'll, I've already created uh, a particular application. Uh, let's create a backend as a backend project quickly. So this, what I'm doing now is for my project, I want to build something called as Contacts Manager. You know, I'm going to build the next, uh, the best million dollar Contacts Manager app or something like that. So I'm going to say contacts manager is the project name so now I'm coming here and then creating a database uh, this is pretty s similar to what you do in your um, relational databases you go and then say file new database so I'm just doing that once you create this uh, backend as a service you will see this is the portal of my backend as a service I've named it as contacts manager it is giving me metrics that you know uh, what is the size of your database uh, as of now since we just created it's uh, empty uh, how many files you have stored how many what is the bandwidth you have consumed how many push notifications you have done emails you have done requests you have been um, uh, got to your uh, backend so all those things on the left hand side what you see is the uh, couple of things about um, the backend as a service these are the, uh, the we call it types but it's uh, pretty similar to what you create a table in uh, say relational database so this is the types we allow you to create custom types by default already we have given you files users and roles so it's a typical uh, you know scenario where you are creating a mobile app and then you want to pretty much uh, have files stored you know blob storage uh, and then users roles and all those things so uh, Basically, we have out of the box given you that. You can also do push notification. Uh, device registrations will be shown here. You can send email, custom emails, uh, and also we allow you to do cloud code. That is on the cloud. Uh, you can write certain business logic wherein you know you check something and then do uh, the insertion and all those things. So now quickly, what I'm going to do is come back here to the types, 
and uh, you will see here we say create a content type or create a connector type so you can connect to a database running on your premises so uh, I'm not sure if you'll have time but we'll see if we can do that so I'm creating a custom type now I'll call it as contacts and as you can see here by default we are already uh, created the uh, audit um, you know columns that are there uh, that you will need so I'm gonna just add a first name uh, last name and then um, I'll say designation and company and mobile and mobile will be a number and we support a lot of uh, types here so if you see here number date time yes no file geo geo point object relation array so you can keep it directly an object a JSON based object or you can create a relation with other column in another table another type uh, you can create an array uh, you know right here raw array so now as soon as I click on save uh, my uh, what do you call the rest API will be uh, available in order to access the rest API you will need to have an API key so let me copy this API key uh, if I come back here and then say that uh, HTTP uh, API ever live v1 and then put my API key and then say contacts so you will see now it says uh, count to zero uh, result is this so as I, as I said uh, it's readily available so just to show that it is available uh, and I'm not bluffing so let's go and then uh, insert um, quickly a test data from backend itself so I can say add an item so I'll come back here and then I'll say I'm from Telerik, I'm an evangelist and first name is Lohit, last name is GN, phone number is a dummy. So I click on uh, save. So you saw that, you know, there's one record now added up. So now I'll come back, refresh again the API and you will see that, you know, I got back the data. So I'm just showing a simple one table, but anything can be done. So let's move ahead. So now having uh, done my backend and having done my, uh, uh, you know, the services are readily available now, I can concentrate my effort now on creating a application. So I'm going to pick up something called as App Builder Hybrid, or it's an hybrid app that I'm creating. So here, if you see here, it says when I say choose, uh, it is asking me to choose a project template. So we give you this many templates uh, as of now. You can use a blank template. You can use a uh, Telerik friend. So that's basically a pre-built application. Or you can use Kendo UI drawer template, blank template, tab strip, or a TypeScript template. So I'm going to take uh, Kendo UI drawer, and I'm going to call it as Contacts Manager. So what I've done is I've already... Uh, it already exists. Uh, I'll say contacts manager app. Okay, because we already have backend with the same name. So what you're going to see now is my browser is going to be transformed into an IDE, integrated development environment, you know, uh, where I can code, where I can debug, where I can simulate, where I can build. So this is what we give you as part of the, uh, this is the app builder service that we have as part of the Telerik mobile platform. We have different choices. Uh, I will show a uh, another choice wherein, you know, this is through the browser, but if you are a Windows guy, so we have a Windows client known as app builder Windows client and you can pretty much uh, install that and then do whatever I'm doing on the browser uh, through that particular uh, interface. We also have Visual Studio extension, so you don't, if you're a Visual Studio guy and then you want to do uh, this hybrid mobile application using Kendo UI Mobile, we have um, app builder extension for Visual Studio, so you don't have to leave Visual Studio, start working from there. So now as you can see, I have my code created at the right hand side here. Um, I can now come in and then uh, just do a run and then you will see the different simulation that you can do. Uh, you can do an iPhone simulation, you can do iPhone 5, you can do iPad, you can do Android phone simulation, tablet simulation, Windows phone simulation. You can also do a build right from here, from this uh, particular uh, window. So what I will do now is, I just did a file new project, right? So I'm going to say iPhone, uh, do a simulation of how this looks like in iPhone. So I'm picking up iPhone 6.0. And you will now see uh, the, the, the bare-bone simple application coming up on your screens now. So what it does is it has put a, a dryer here 
uh, I have just clicked on the dryer button and you will see like you know something slides from the left you see home settings and contacts so these are different menus available in the project so I'll click on contacts uh, when I uh, when you see that you know I've already clicked on contacts you will see Bob Mary John so that's a typical uh, you know out-of-the-box code that we give you so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go and then start changing things um, now we need to connect to the back end that I show, we just created. So for that I need a, uh, uh, you know, in, uh, I need to use a library uh, that's known as Everlive. So that's the, uh, let me drag and drop my code here. Uh, this basically, uh, if you go to the back end, uh, you will be able to download a JavaScript API. So as I said, we give APIs for every um, a platform that you can think of so as of now what I'm doing is I'm uh, using the JavaScript API because I'm in a hybrid um, if you see here I'm trying to add everlive.all.min.js and I'm going to do an upload so it's going to go and sit in my scripts folder I will come back here to my index.html and I will just put some references here I will say scripts and uh, the script that I want to reference is everlive.min, sorry, all.min.j. So that's the script that I have. And uh, let me save this. So once that is done, um, all my application logic is in uh, app.js. What I want to do is I want to go to the contacts uh, folder and then I want to uh, you know, get the co uh, code from the contacts that we just created in the back end, right? You know, we just created a database. So what I will do is I will just uh, create, uh, copy a couple of codes lines here and then just replace this um, code here. So just give me a second. I'll explain you what I'm doing. So what I've done is, I have created something known as a data source. So this is kendo.data.data source. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, it's basically, uh, you know, it just needs a couple of lines to connect to our backend. I just say, hey, I want you to, the type that you will be connecting is Everlife. The type name or, you know, the table name is contacts. And that is all it is, requ that is all it requires to connect to our backend and then do it. Before we can do this, uh, we just need to enable something. And that is the key from our backend. So let me open up another window I need I forgot to copy the key for our backend because that's how uh, each uh, request is being validated so let me go to webinars demo and the backend contacts manager yeah uh, I'm I'm zooming wherever it is appropriate so I've been zooming in uh, wherever you need to know so if you see here this is the API key so I'll just copy this API key and I'll go back to the code. So all I need to do now is, you know, when the when the device starts or when the device is ready, uh, we just need to create one variable called as Everlife or instance of Everlife and then just leave it. That's it. So with this, what happens is uh, when the data source tries to, when this data source tries to connect to our, it knows where to connect and I have told what is the uh, type or the table it has to connect and then that's all it, it knows everything so now let let me go back to the views called contacts and I will just uh, get my snippets for the contacts and what I will do is replace this guy with the contacts and just do a small change in the application so here if you see this everything is working based on this particular uh, line of code so if you see here we are creating a Kendo mobile application and we have told we need a flat skin and we have told which is the initial screen it has to go so let me change this instead of flat skin what I will do is you know I want it to use the native skin uh, and then I will say instead of home.html, I want you to go to uh, contacts.html. So let me now go to the, uh, I'll reload. And if you see here now, we had created one particular record in the server side called Lohit. And there you go, we are getting uh, Lohit coming back. 
and I can just go in and say how does it look like in Windows uh, iPhone 7 and you can see like you know iPhone 7 is completely different right I can come back here click on the contacts and I will see the um, thing you know I'm not sure how much time we will get but uh, let's quickly go and then create adding a record I just want to show you how easy it is to do a uh, adding a record I'll create uh, a new file and it's a new contact and let me get my snippet so for the new contact my HTML will be something like this and I've created this I need a JavaScript for this so let me get my JavaScript you know in interest of the time I'm just doing all this because within one hour it is highly not possible to code and then also show everything so I'm just using help of snippet so I just created a simple function wherein um, I just go and then uh, do this so if you see here saving is as simple as doing an add function and to the add function I'm just giving a bunch of JSON objects here and then I, I just call data source dot sync I don't have to do anything else except this uh, uh, number of lines now let's go back to the uh, I'm going to reload I'll click on the plus button you will see that you know I'm getting first name so let's say I'm going to create Abhishek and I will say Kant and I will say he's the MD and company is Telerik and then phone number again you know basic number and then I'll click on the save button and there we go so we have created our second record uh, let me refresh and there you go I still have the data if you don't believe me let's go back to the back end I'll open the types I'll click on the contacts and it is loading and we have Abhishek Khan stored in the server so this is as easy as it can uh, get so uh, somebody is asking about validation so uh, of course in this you know demo what I've done is I have not put any validation so you can use our Kendo UI uh, form validator it comes as part of the Kendo UI framework itself uh, and you can do a basic validation on your UI side but question should be like you know what if this is being used by a rest API way and then I have given the API to my uh, partner and then he's directly pushing data uh, through the rest API so how do I validate my uh, uh, things so what you need to do is if you see here in the in my back end I have something called as cloud code so click on cloud code and on the right hand side now we will see like you know it says something called just give me a second my bro my mouse is gone somewhere so yeah so there you go so on the when I click on the cloud code it shows like uh, my table name dot js so this is nothing but a node uh, it, it's uh, it's all running on the node so uh, this is like you have a node script uh, which is a JavaScript and then what we provide you is we provide you a bunch of hooks as we call it or the events so what you can do is you can come in here put your custom code before read after read uh, before create after create uh, before update after update and then before delete after delete so this is a uh, uh, you know point or this is the place where you can come in and then put your server side um, uh, in a codes in order to do some um, uh, validation on your data or some validation business uh, validation in all those things of course I'm not going deep into all this push notification in all those things we provide you a very easy way of doing push and then device notify uh, device registrations and then sending an email uh, all those things within this one hour it's highly not possible we have already done uh, a couple of webinars exclusively talking about uh, Telerik backend as a service, Telerik analytics as a service, uh, you know all those things. So I re I suggest you go to TelerikHelper.net and then take a look at that. So now what we have done is we are done with the coding. So let's assume this is the, you know I, I have time only for these two screens to show. So now I want to build this right. So what I can do is I can click on the build, and as you can see here right from this particular window I can just uh, select what I want to do I can build an Android I can build an iOS I can build a uh, Windows phone package so let me go ahead and then click on Android and I will say build the app package I'll click on next so what it is doing is uh, on, the, on our cloud we have phone gap build uh, you know integrated so it's picking my source code uh, and then it what it does is it automatically uh, does everything in the back end that otherwise you would have to manually do it 
you know, so let's give it a couple of seconds. What it is doing is takes the source code. Uh, we have the phone gap built and uh, it would do the APK because I said Android. So it will do an APK and come back and say, hey, you know what? It's done. Uh, if you want to install on the device, you can uh, uh, kind of scan this QR code on a device and then it will be able to uh, install from the QR code. Or here is the uh, you know bitly link uh, URL that you can give it to somebody to download or I can click on the download and then I'll see uh, we will now see like we're gonna get the you know downloading download starting if you see here it says contact manager app dot apk uh, it's in the bottom of the screen uh, it says contact manager uh, app dot apk and I'm now downloading the apk onto my system and then I can do like uh, give it to somebody or anything so let's wait for that to come back it's downloading now uh, so we talked about something called as app manager so now this is fine I have built it I have debugged it I have uh, uh, simulated this and then saw, saw that you know everything works well on the different uh, things so how do I hand it over to uh, let's say my testing team so for this we give you something called as um, you know if you go back to the uh, home screen that is a workspace screen of the Telerik mobile platform on the right hand side we have something called as Mo app manager so this app manager here if I click on that it's going to open up a similar portal so what this app manager does is it's uh, you know basically as of now it says hey you don't have any apps why don't you add an app so before that let me talk about how this works so uh, you have to set up your users and groups so you can create a group saying like project one and then in the project one group maybe you have uh, you know uh, testers and developers so here you see that you know I'm I'm the default group and I'm the active user here uh, I can pretty much go here and then uh, get one more user so I will say my let's say I'll uh, put my and then I'll say put him to the default group and then I'll say send invitation so now what happens is I can open up my email on my uh, device and then it will say hey sign up for this particular uh, sign up for this particular uh, portal so uh, he will have so if you see here it says pending activation so I need to go to my email and then on my phone and then so what it does is it will give since it's if you're opening the email from an Android it will point you to the Android Play Store to download a companion app so the uh, then the dev team what they can do is just come in here and remember we just downloaded the uh, APK so I'll just come here and then add a new application so basically I can drop the APK now uh, let me get my Windows Explorer where is it it is here so I'm gonna now drag and drop this particular APK So what it is doing is now it's extracting the metadata and then it's going to create like a, uh, you know, it says, okay, I've read everything. So you can see it's an app version 1.0 and all those things. I will say add add app. So now on the companion app on all platforms like Windows Phone or iOS or uh, uh, on the Android, uh, your testing team will see that, hey, an application has been published. So, so I'm not published it. So I can go ahead and then say, hey, take this, publish it. So now it is like my own private store and I control who can get this application to test or to use it or whatever it is uh, however you want to use it but we give you this controlled application management uh, service or you know offering uh, for your organization so you can pretty much show no more uh, you know keeping the APK in a shared folder somebody copies it to the SD card puts it to the device and says hey install or whatever it is so you can pretty much do an uh, seamless hand hand uh, you know handshake with between your dev team and the test team to say hey there's a new application available just download and then start uh, testing it so you can do that so that's about the application manager now let's talk about the testing team so what how can they test this right so what we do is we provide you a Telerik testing mobile framework so let me bring up and then show you what we give you so as of now the way Telerik testing mobile framework is done is it's just a, a node based uh, program or a software and uh, we can you can download that from our uh, platform when you sign up for the platform you get inside your platform this is a uh, zip file that we give you and uh, as you can see here I've already unzipped it so this is the folder this is a zip file so what does it contain basically 
uh, this is all it, it has so it's a node base so if I run this my testing framework will start running we have a agent we have a runner uh, we have a uh, message server so basically it uses sockets to communicate between uh, the test runner and the application itself you have to instrument your apps to contain one um, file if it is a mobile web app or if it is a hybrid web a hybrid mobile app uh, you will need to include one JavaScript file so now let me go to a uh, command prompt and what I will do is let me get the command prompt and I'm already in the particular folder so I just have to say start win.cmd so now what it, what it did was if you see here notice this it says hey starting Telerik mobile testing the test runner has been running at this particular URI uh, there's a web agent running at this URI and there's a message server running at this URI so now if you see here this is the test runner uh, it says test runner and then these are the tests that I have already written as a demo app but uh, the tests are all written using JavaScript so now what I will do is on the right hand side if you see there is something called as add agent so for us any device or any uh, browser is like an agent and the runner will run the test cases on the agent if I click on add agent it says that hey uh, on Android and iOS uh, native uh, applications what you do is download the Telerik testing mobile app so it's available in the iOS app store or the Android uh, play store it's a companion app for Telerik uh, testing uh, framework uh, on that you just have to set up that host and then port so that means your device and your laptop or desktop has to be in the same network because you know it's working on a socket uh, for now for this uh, demo purpose what I'm going to do is I will navigate to this particular uh, URI that is shown here if you see here web navigate your mobile browser to this URL so it needs a uh, it basically has to connect and uh, do that so I'll, I'll go here and you can see that on the right hand side it says connected and ready to run test and if you look at the agents I see that I have an MSIE as an agent not only that what I can do is I can get a Chrome window and I will say like again I will copy that same URL and I'll come back here and then I'll say and you will see on the right hand side it says MSIE and then Chrome so let me try to resize Chrome and the uh, IE windows side by side and let's do some magic here to make sure you know we see everything oh, give me a second so I'm just trying to resize them so now what I will do is I will uncheck everything but uh, check these tests and then I will just say run test on these agent if you see here uh, I have check boxes here check for all the both the agents I can come back here and then say run test and the right hand side now you will see that you know it's going to tacos and then doing something entering something and then the test is finished so this is like a automation for your particular uh, um, you know uh, this is like an automation for your uh, mobile apps or mobile web app mobile web apps or your uh, hybrid mobile apps or your native mobile uh, mobile app so basically your tests are written using JavaScript so if I have to show you guys the test itself uh, we have a sample here I'm going to pick up the web sample and uh, if you see here the uh, it's a specs folder and then I have let me bring up an editor There was, a, there was a question like you know how is this different from a phone gap uh, many people that I have been talking to over two years are confused with phone gap uh, you gotta understand that phone gap is only two things phone gap is a uh, I mean of course now phone gap is renamed as a Cordova so Cordova is basically two things one is a build system Cordova build system knows how to build a hybrid mobile app to an APK file or to an IPA file or to a zap file you know that is the build system and then you also have Cordova JavaScript API which is nothing but the only person who can give you a, a you know the device capabilities within your hybrid apps is Cordova JavaScript API so Cordova uh, provides you access to camera provides you access to the SMS or whatever you know the hardware capabilities on your uh, on your device is made possible through the Cordova JavaScript API so let me open 
uh, one of the JavaScript uh, test files. But from a Telerik perspective, you know, Telerik mobile platform, it's much more than that. It's not just, uh, you know, just giving you a, uh, you know, maybe a build system or anything. It's much more than that. Backend as a service, the application building, I just showed you an app manager. Now I'm showing you a, test, a Telerik testing mobile framework. We have prototyping, we have feedback mechanism, we have analytics. I have not been able to show analytics, but I'll show you a live dashboard. So this is how you write a test. It's a JavaScript based test. So you write your uh, tests in JavaScript, that's what I meant to say. So just give me a second. Um, I don't have Notepad++ installed on my system, so I have to use my Visual Studio to just open, because uh, if I open it in Notepad, you, will, you won't be able to see the different uh, color scheme, that like the syntax highlight that happens. So there you go. So um, what I've done is basically uh, I'm setting up all my uh, names of my controls on the page itself, like, you know, different things, and then uh, these are the so here is a this is a step you know web prepare domain navigate to URL wait wait for URL uh, tap tap on that particular radio button get checked so see if that particular uh, button is checked or not uh, click on this particular radio button check if the radio button was checked or not and then similarly set the selected value on this particular control to this particular value so it's all typical JavaScript that you uh, can use to write this particular test. So these are all the steps that we have written and then finally the test case will be like this. Let me show you. Yeah, here you go. So the test is in, in order to build a, a taco, I need to first tap the floor tartilla, click on the con tartilla, select the fajita filling, select the avocado or whatever, leave a comment, check gift wrapping. So this is a step that what we saw earlier and then I'm just composing my test based on the steps. So these are the reusable uh, steps that I can pretty much use. So this is as simple as it can get when it comes to uh, writing a, a test script. Now we are done with testing, maybe it has gone live and we want to know how is it performing, right? You know, basically on a from a metrics perspective, uh, how, how is it performing? So what I can do is I'll, I'll uh, use a, a live application, uh, not our current application because I don't have time to integrate analytics into that. But rather, if you go to your Android Play Store or the I iOS App Store, there is an application called as Ninjaverse. Uh, it's something that we built, uh, you know, myself and uh, Abhishek Kant. And it's uh, live now in the um, the stores. So this is the analytics of that particular, this is the analytics that we have integrated with that and then I'll show you the extent of information or the metrics that we provide as part of the analytics itself. So if you see here when I come to the analytics portal, this is my dashboard, it is showing me my project status, there are lifetime usages 1945 times, somebody has uh, used it. Um, there are 22 new exceptions, there are still, still three open exceptions. This is the usage from September 21st to October 12th, it usually gives like a month, uh, it shows a month's uh, initial thing when you come to the dashboard. Uh, here's a geolocation, meaning you know from where, what is the geography in the world where your app has been downloaded and then it quickly gives you a glance of how many percentage of users are on Android, how many percentage of users are on iOS and I can actually go to a world map to get a deep dive. And as you can see here, I can click on India because it shows like everybody is coming from India. And now you will see like, you know, certain bubbles coming up in the center. So if you see here, if I zoom in, there's this green bubbles here. So I'm going to zoom in and then, uh, you know, click on those bubbles to show you what they exactly mean. So if I zoom in, I'm zooming in, so I'm just looking at how your view is coming up, it's still not there, so yeah. Now if you see here, I zoomed in, on the right hand side of your screen, just notice what is there, it says Faridabad 8 usages. So these are the, some of the things that we provide you in terms of, uh, you know, um, the world map and coming to the versions, I've clicked on versions now. Uh, for this app, what we have done is we have released uh, two versions of it. So major, the the initial version was one, and then we have we have released 1.1. So it is showing how people are using 1.1.1 .1 uh, or 1.1.0. Not only that, we give you metrics like environment. So if you see here, um, the operating system, uh, 
uh, it goes and then gives you the Android iOS operating system version. So this is interesting. I want to know how many people are on 7.1 or 8.0, you know, all those things. So basically this is the operating system uh, version and languages, English, there is somebody downloading it from ES, that is a Spain and the model, the device model. So you see, there you go. This is something that we kind of track it, so like Nexus 4, how many people are using a Nexus 4, XT, iPhone 5S, Nexus S, yes, iPhone. So it gives you a complete thing about, okay, what should be our next upgrade or next uh, thing about my application? Who should I concentrate on? So is it like if you have 90% of the people on Android, yeah, that makes sense to, you know, first go for Android version, uh, put features on the Android version. And you know, like that, you can pretty much do all those things. We don't stop there. Uh, you can do something, what we call as feature tracking. Uh, in our Ninjaverse application, we have two screens called show, that is uh, show all the brochures and then uh, send the brochure. So these two together, put together, form a feature called as brochure. So I want to track how many people are in this brochure and how many people are using the show screen, how many people are using the email sent. As you can see here, 90% just go and then see the brochure, but nobody sends an email to somebody, you know, like, you know uh, sending the brochure to somebody. And similarly, in the engagement uh, feature, we have news, uh, sorry, quiz, subscription and people show. So this is how people are going. So the point I'm trying to make here is on the left hand side you see a lot of um, you know things that you can do. Uh, activity, world map, versions, environment, installations, feature usage, feature timing, feature value, exception, everything. You know we also have live data being shown. So these are the number of uh, 32 minutes ago somebody from this particular IP He's using 1.1 version of our application, and uh, you know I can take a look at wh what was he doing. Like you know, what what from where is he coming? It's an it was an Android. Uh, his memory is 128 MB. You know all those things. Uh, I'll get it, and it has been used from Kolkata. You know, so like that. So this is the to extent of things that we give you as part of the analytics. So that's uh, uh, and then we also have other things like uh, let me go back to the platform. So the main crux of uh, you know this was uh, the the application building, the backend as a service, the testing and the analytics. We also have the feedback component. So if you are an Android or iOS, if you just shake your uh, if, so we uh, provide this application feedback as a plugin to your uh, hybrid application. So if you just shake your phone, uh, it automatically uh, you know comes up. So the feedback component just comes up. And uh, so uh, there's a question, how is this Ninjaverse analytics, how is it related to the mobility platform? So basically I was trying to make a point that, you know, we provide you all these things. The Ninjaverse is a application that we, it's an unofficial application that we did as part of Telerik. And then uh, uh, what we were trying to do was whenever myself or, you know, my colleagues go to a particular event representing our company and somebody quickly comes in and says, hey, can you send me a brochure? So yes, we said, okay, well, let's mobilize that. So there is a particular section wherein uh, you can look at all the brochures that we have. Uh, we have close to 14 or 25 uh, components or the pro product line and uh, I can send brochure of each product. So if somebody says send me Kendo UI or somebody says platform, I just have to check a checkbox uh, in front of the platform and ask his email and then put the email and then click on uh, send and it it immediately goes to uh, you know that email with a uh, beautifully crafted email saying like hey I met you at so and so uh, place and then you ask for a uh, brochure so here is the brochure attachment so that is what mobility is all about right you know I am in an event and then I have to quickly send a brochure should I wait till I come back to my office or can I immediately open up my phone take a application then uh, uh, you know send it so we are using our backend uh, in the back end I've written a code to send the email and uh, from the app uh, and using our app builder we have built the application it's a hybrid mobile application and we have put the same code without writing anything we have put it on the iOS store we have put it on the Android store so that's mobility you know in a, in a, in a way that I'm talking about and then we are showcasing that you know if you if you want to take a look at our solution uh, we have everything you know application building the testing the uh, mobile backend as a service, the analytics, the feedback as part of Telerik mobile platform. 
So some of the success, and here is an interesting thing that I was working on. Um, so let's say you have a SAP business suite, right? You know, you have a lot of SAP ERP systems, like, uh, uh, you know, the you have the ERP or the CRM, you have the SRM and all those things. And then with that, if you have already a SAP and then you just want to mobilize your enterprise data, uh, I want to expose maybe a purchase order uh, approval reject and I want to maybe, um, you know, mobilize sales order process. So, but my backend is SAP. So you don't have to use our Telric mobile platform backend as a service because you already have it. But what you can do is you can use our application development tools like UI, the IDE, the testing, the productivity, but connect to your SAP uh, data using a NetWeaver gateway system. NetWeaver gateway will give you a OData service. You just consume the OData service because our Kendo data, da data source uh, natively works with OData. It understands OData protocol. It understands how the URI has to be formed, everything. So just to quickly show you uh, what this is all about. Here is the Windows client that I'm going to be using. Uh, let me bring it. So on your screen, um, it will come in a second. So now you should see that there's a uh, IDE that's coming up. It's known as the Telerik App Builder Windows client. And I'm going to be now opening up something called a SAP PO. So this is a application that I built for a partner of ours. Uh, basically, I'm connecting to uh, a SAP NetWeaver Gateway OData service, consuming data from there, and then uh, mobilizing their uh, complete mobile. Let me run this first. So I'm I'm, I'm mobilizing their uh, purchase order approval system. Basically, if somebody is on the move and then they want to quickly approve a purchase order and then view the purchase order, what it does is it's going to go ahead and then just show the pending purchase orders. So the first screen, what you see is a login screen. And I just provided the user ID password, so maybe I have my credential. So now when I click on login, it goes to the SAP NetWeaver gateway system, it authenticates the user and comes back and says, hey, you have 38 purchase order pending. So now I can click on the first purchase order. What that will do is it will give me complete details about that particular purchase order. It says, here's a PO. It's not loaded for you guys yet, so it's coming up now. So what you're seeing there is the purchase order detail screen and you will see that the um, it's a it's been raised by a person called Ravi and then it's been raised it was over two months ago it's worth 680 euros and the info of this particular order is the purchase order number is so and so account assignment there's nothing delivery date is July 10 2014 uh, it is to a new act plant plant the company is best run USA the items they need is motor oil gas, uh, motor oil gallon or gas, whatever it is, 85 quantity at a subtotal of $680. I can click on the item itself and it will give me a details of that particular item. You should see that on your screen now. Yeah, I'm now in a um, particular item where I'm looking at what is this item. This item is 10W40 motor oil gallon. Uh, it's uh, priced at 85 uh, USD and I am asking for eight quantity of that and so that comes around to whatever and the material description is this material group is consumables and then delivery on July 10 2014 to the New York plant the address is so and so let me go back and not only that if you see the screen I have two buttons here it says a tick mark and then a cross mark so that means approve it or reject it so I can pretty much now click on approve it will ask you, hey, do you want to approve this particular order submitted by so-and-so? I can say, yeah, um, approved. You know, I can put my name. And it will go back to SAP, uh, you know. And then, of course, it's taking a little bit of time because, you know, I'm on a low bandwidth, or low network. So uh, what it will do is it will go back to that particular SAP service and say, hey, here is the work item ID uh, and here is the approval uh, notes and then it has been approved. So it will go do its workflow in the background. Uh, looks like it is having a problem, but, you know, uh, yeah, there you go. It will come back. Now you will see, like, you know, if I reach, uh, it, it, it is a, it's done. So similarly, you know, I'm showing all the uh, whatever POs that I have. So this is this is what I said. So this has been done using our uh, uh, Kendo UI mobile control set, and I'm using our app builder IDE, 
and uh, I'm, I've used my testing. I've used my. I can put analytics now to track as to how my users are using this. Uh, you know, it's kind of a feedback for me. So oh, all in all, uh, the point that I'm trying to make is, if you have a mobility needs, you can uh, you know take a look at Telerik's mobile platform. Uh, if you you don't have to use everything, you can use each piece that you have you want to use, and then pre pretty much. Uh, you know, go ahead from there. So that's typically what a Telerik mobile platform is all about. Some of the uh, I'm going to next show you the some of the success stories that we have had with uh, Telerik mobile platform. These are real customers. So there is a company called Paylocity. Uh, it has uh, gone ahead with uh, uh, it's They have used a cross-platform self-service application. They built a cross-platform self-service application for over 275,000 users that they uh, have and they delivered it with like you know within six months they were able to build it and then put it to the store uh, there is home Act group and then there is also United Kingdom Parliament which has used our whole platform and then the McKinson uh, web-based electronic health record company EHR company which is used for this uh, also has used this platform And that's typically what we have, and that's why you know uh, the thing about our Telerik platform is UI for any approach for any platform, and then we have the cloud services for you. So that's uh, that's all I had to say in terms of the Telerik uh, mobile platform. Uh, before we, I take up the uh, question and answer, let me stop recording. So thank you once again for being with us. So I'm going to be stopping the recording now. Thank you.